Thank you. So 10 steps to zero waste. Uh, it's exciting to be in this uh, European zero waste uh, meeting. I like Zabor, Zabor, uh, zero Zabor, I like that. Um, I'm only going to say one thing about incinerators. Even if we made incineration safe, we would never make it sensible. It simply does not make sense to spend so much money destroying resources that we should be sharing with the future. Now, we've written a book about zero waste. In the front row, we have Rosano Ercolini and Patricia Lasciotto. The book is in Italian, but I believe there will be a Spanish version soon. So 10 steps to zero waste. There they are in total, and I should be talking a little bit about each step. So if we start with source separation and door-to-door -door collection, that's what it looks like in San Francisco. Once a week, three containers, one for the recyclables, one for the compostables, and one for the residuals. In Anani, in Basque country, I think you know where that is, uh, they have a four container system and different containers are picked up on different days. And it's a unique collection system. I have not seen anything as elegant and creative anywhere in the world. I've been to 55 countries on this issue and that is the most creative collection system. Now those brown containers are for the organic waste and you can see how effective it is because the, the organic fraction in Onani is 99.76% pure. That is fantastic. You, you're doing very well if you get 95%, but 99.76% shows how well this system is working. And it has to. You have to have clean organics if farmers are going to use it to grow food as they're doing in San Francisco. And recycling, I think you're all familiar with recycling. But these materials here are going to increase in value with China and India and other countries consuming more and more, catching up with us. And you're going to be very, look very silly if you are destroying these resources in an incinerator in years to come. Uh, reuse, repair, and deconstruction. There's a wonderful example of this uh, in Berkeley, California. It's called Urban Ore. It's a large warehouse. And there you see people who are buying appliances and furniture, everything that you can think of, but all secondhand, uh, including building materials. Uh, builders take in doors and windows and uh, various uh, items from deconstructed buildings. And this has been running for 30 years in Berkeley. It's grossing $3 million a year and has created 12 full-time jobs. Over in Burlington, Vermont, uh, you have another operation called Recycle North. And there you see in the bottom two pictures the kind of layouts there, immaculate layouts. It looks like a, uh, a department store, but it's all for secondhand materials. And also in this facility, they are training people. They're taking people off the street and training them to repair large appliances or small appliances, electrical goods, or computers. And they train them for six months, then help them to get a job. And they also link to deconstruction, uh, companies which take down buildings in the reverse order that they were put up, and the salvage materials are then used by other companies for, for building projects, and here, citizens do it yourself, and so on. Now, step six is waste reduction, and there we have see all kinds of initiatives around the world. In Ireland, the government put a 15 cent tax on plastic shopping bags, and to everybody's amazement, in one year, they reduced the amount of bags that people were using by 92%. In Italy, some of the supermarkets allow you to refill your own bottles with detergent and uh, uh, shampoo, and some also for water and milk and wine. And this store, my favorite store in Italy, Epicotta in Capanari, near Luca in Tuscany, 60 different taps for 60 liquids, and here you see people refilling their own detergent bottles, uh, their own olive oil, and vino, the wine you help yourself. It's excellent, my favorite store. Rossano Ercolini, 
These are his primary school children. They are drinking tap water, not bottled water, and they're drinking it from glass, and they're eating off china and stainless steel, not plastics. And we need every institution in Basque country to get rid of this plastic, throw away plastics. Let's go back to glass, ceramic, and stainless steel and employ people to wash these utensils after they've used. We can involve our babies. This is Echo Bimbi, reusable diapers, not throwaway uh, diapers. The pay by bag system, I think you have this working in Ursabil in uh, Basque Country. Uh, the idea here is the compostables and recyclables are free, but the residual fraction, the more you make, the more you pay. Step eight. Step eight is the most important step if you're really serious about getting close to zero waste. Uh, it completely avoids incineration. Now, inc incineration is attractive to the throwaway industry, the throwaway manufacturers of throwaway goods, because it makes them disappear. But in zero waste, we want the, um, the residual fraction to be very visible because these are our mistakes, and we have to change these mistakes, this bad industrial design, bad purchasing habits. These have to be changed if we're going to get to zero waste and sustainability. So step eight, then, is building a residual separation and research facility in front of the landfill. No waste can go directly into the landfill. It must go through this facility. And in this facility, we can pull out more recyclables, we can pull out more toxics, we can stabilize the dirty organic fraction above ground in either composting or anaerobic digestion, stabilize it above ground before it causes the problems uh, underground in a landfill. Uh, 